high Z, low Z, variable Z. What's the difference? If I'm plugging my guitar into my audio interface and running an amp simulation or an effects pedal plug-in, then I'm good to go, right? No matter the interface, as long as I'm plugging right in, I'm gonna get the same sound. Well, not exactly. Here's the thing. Inputs on audio interfaces are not one size fits all. Whenever you plug your guitar into an audio interface or an amp or a pedal, there's an interaction that takes place there. And that interaction is called impedance or Z for short. And believe it or not, impedance has a huge impact on your guitar tone. And that's why variable Z on Mbox Studio is such a valuable tool for guitarists. And I'm gonna show you why. Now, admittedly, Impedance is kind of a complicated topic. There's a lot to it. It can be a little tricky to understand, but we're gonna start at a very, very basic level. So let me do a quick demonstration and show you how different your tone can be depending on the impedance that you're using. I have my guitar plugged into input two on Mbox Studio, and I'm using the Brainworks PT100 tube amp simulation on my computer. I love the sound of this amp. Now let's hear what it sounds like if I go over to Mbox Control and use variable Z. I'm going to select high Z as my input impedance. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now, if I come back over here to Mbox Control and I use variable Z to switch our impedance down to 22K, this is a really, really low impedance setting. Here's what our tone sounds like now. Now, there is a huge difference between those two tones, right? The high Z impedance gives us a clean, articulate, punchy feel. It sounds and feels like I'm playing through a tube amp. It's what I would expect. But the low Z impedance setting is a little too bassy. It's not super clear, a little muffled, and the response is just not what I'm looking for. It doesn't feel or sound like I'm playing through a real tube amp. And that's because guitars want to be plugged into a high Z input. If you're plugging into effects pedals or tube amps, then generally you're plugging into high Z inputs and that interaction gives you the dynamics and tone that you would expect coming out of your guitar. Low Z on the other hand is really optimized for microphones. Microphones send out a really, really different signal than an electric guitar and that's why you need to have different impedance settings depending on which one you're using. Now at this point you might be thinking, okay cool, high Z, low Z. As long as I have those two options, I'm good to go. Low Z for microphones, high Z for instruments. Again, not quite. This is music production and for every rule there are about 10 good exceptions and the same is true for impedance. Now I wanna show you why variable Z is so valuable for guitarists who use Mbox Studio to record guitars. I have a Pro Tools session that I'm working on and I have three different guitar parts that I have really different requirements for each. I have different effects pedals and one impedance for all three is just not gonna cut it. So rather than explain it, let me show you so you can hear the difference and hear what happens when you have complete control over your impedance using variable Z. Let's jump into Pro Tools and check it out. So on the main riff for this song, I want it to be kind of a dark sputtering fuzz sound. And to achieve that, I'm using the Tri Knob Fuzz plugin into a Brainworks Sur PT100 amp plugin. It's that same amp that I showed you in the comparison. Now, I know that the Tri Knob Fuzz is emulating an Electro Harmonics Big Muff Pi, and the impedance on those pedals is notoriously low for a guitar pedal. It's around 100K. And that's what helps you achieve that Big Muff sound. It's that interaction. So if you're using any other impedance, this Fuzz plugin is just not going to react the way that it would in real life. So in order to make this as authentic as possible. I'm going to toggle over to Mbox Control 
and I'm gonna use variable Z to change my input impedance. Now, like I said, normally you can expect about 100 kilo ohms input impedance on these big muffs. So I'm gonna put mine right here at 90, and that's gonna get us really close to the original sound. Let's go back to Pro Tools. I'm gonna record enable this, and let's see what we got. Nice, I really am digging that tone. It feels like it would feel if I was playing through a Big Muff. And Variable Z really helps me get closer to that authentic feel. So let me close out of these plugins and let's press record and get this part down. Perfect, the second half of this, the guitar part is gonna change. So this fuzz part is good for now. Now on my next guitar part, I want a super clean wah to really balance out that dirty part. I'm using the Black Shiny Wah plugin on this track, one of my favorites, and I'm actually not even using an amp simulator. I'm just going straight into the BF2A compressor to kind of balance it out and boost the volume. Wah pedals, like fuzz pedals, want a really low input impedance, and typically wah pedals have about 70 to 120 kilo ohms input impedance, but the beauty of variable Z is that you can test each one and find which one works for you. Now I did this, I ran through all of these lower input impedances to find which one I liked the best with this wah, and I settled on 70k that really tends to roll off some of those spiky high frequencies that come with that wide filter sweep of a wah and it keeps things nice and smooth. So now that I've used variable Z to set my input impedance, let's record enable our wah track and our wah control track. And just as a little side note here, my expression pedal is plugged into the back of Mbox Studio in the first expression foot switch input and that's what I'm using to control this wah. Let's press record and get this next part. Perfect. Now for the sake of time, I'm actually just gonna cut this and duplicate it. We'll go back and fix that all later, but like I said, I'm gonna change up my guitar part for the second part of this song. For the next part of this song, we're entering kind of a breakdown where I'm just gonna play a little solo. And for this, I just want a straight up guitar plug directly into amp edge of breakup classic tube sound. Again, I'm gonna use the PT100, but I wanna to introduce to you something called a capacitor. When selecting your input impedance using variable Z, you're gonna notice that all of these values are listed on their own and with a plus cap option. This takes your selected impedance and it adds a capacitor to it. And without getting too technical, a capacitor has very similar characteristics to a vacuum tube that you would find in regular tube amps. And this allows you to get that tube feel under your fingers even though you're playing a virtual amp on your computer. This is a really big deal for guitarists because we all know that even if your tone is identical to your favorite tube amp, you also wanna get as close as you can to that feel. There's something about a tube feel under your fingers that is really almost indescribable, but it's really important for getting your takes right. I'm gonna use this one mega ohm plus cap option. One mega ohm is generally what you get as an input impedance for tube amps, and this capacitor makes it so that it really feels more like an amp. It gives me that vacuum tube feel on top of my regular input impedance. So let's go back over to Pro Tools. I'm gonna to record enable my guitar solo track with this instance of PT100, and let's see what kind of tone we got. Let's start halfway through our track and lay down a little solo. So what does this all mean? 
In the end, impedance really is a spectrum. There's not just two options. And depending on the plugin that you're using, amp, effect, whatever, you need to have the right impedance for your guitar to feel natural. And that's where Variable Z really gives you an upper hand in recording direct. Now, like I said in the beginning, impedance is a big, complicated topic. There's a lot more to it than what we've talked about in this video. But if you want to do some more reading, I've linked some articles below that you can check out that'll go a little deeper into what it is and how it works. And if you want these guitar stems for yourself, they are available for download again in the links below. Feel free to check them out and play with them. Thank you for joining us. We can't wait to hear what you create using Variable Z. We can't wait to hear your tone and we will see you on the next one.